Welcome to SimScale training on data analysis. My name is Pavel Sosnowski and I will have the pleasure of being your host today. Let's jump in and begin. We will start with the online application and have a look at the graphical user interface of SimScale post processor. This is an example of, of what we might see when we're working with the data that we acquired earlier. The main first thing that we need to notice is the item selection panel, that is a tree view. Very often people get uh, contact us and say, hey, I do not see anything. I have a white screen in front of me. Well, the question would be, did you select what you want to visualize? This is where you, want, where you decide to do that. Most of the time, we will be selecting the simulation under the simulation section of our results. We can also visualize the meshes that we created or some screenshots that were done earlier, choose some saved states, etc. We'll take a look at that during the live session in a moment. The second element, very important to pay attention to, is the pipeline filter browser. This is where we will be applying the simplifications to our geometry, to our data, to, to visualize it in the most comprehensive way. We always will start with the root, that is the run simulation, representing the whole data chunk. On top of that, we'll be adding filters to it in order to make some technical, technical visualizations. Further, we have the properties panel, each filter has certain properties that need to be selected to be viewed. Further, obviously a main vi a viewer where the things are visualized. Further, some time control. The data that we are going to simulate will be presented as the initial state conditions. Very often we'll go to multiple time steps unless we're doing some static analysis single step simulations. Most of the time the first thing you will see is the initial state of your project. And in order to see the final result, we just need to move forward in time. We have some field control controls to display particular elements of the result that we want to visualize, such as velocity, choose velocities, choose pressure, choose stress. All these fields that are represented and are particular elements of the result can be used to color and have a scale inside our viewer. There would be no good post processor without the possibility of rescaling your results in order for them to match the applied range that is of interest for us. That's why we have the rescale menu the view orientation control to have it properly positioned and one more little thing the WebGL control which will allow us to modify whether we are gonna perform the rendering on the local machine or stream the images directly from the web browser from our service and visualize the results as an image instead of using our machine to perform the graphical operations. That was a very short introduction and let's jump to the live post-processing. You see that I had not so much luck with some test simulations. This is what we'll see in uh, the SimScale dashboard of a, ex an example project. I will jump right now into it. As usual, we'll start with seeing the mesh creator. Since we are today interested only in the post processor, I'll just jump that, jump, jump over there, and immediately we see the white screen without any results. So it's time to select what is it that I want to visualize. For now, I'll go with the turbulent steady state flow simulation run number one and choose the solution field of this element. After a second, the data 
is being packed right now as a WebGL object and being transferred to my computer, which later will be rendered and displayed in front of us. Now I have a very nice smooth behavior of the whole geometry. I can play with it around. In order to, to start working, I will apply the first filter and let's say I'll jump and make a slice through this geometry. We have some parameters such as setting up the origin of uh, this splitting. We can move it a little bit on the side, just a little more. So let's say we would like to have a split, a slice through this plane. I apply the filter. It is ready done. Obviously we need to toggle the visibility and hide the other objects that may be blocking the view. So I'll just hide the run and there we go. We have just a single slice. We made a simplification of the whole geometry, the whole volume, to a particular plane that goes through this geometry. With the slice we have the possibility of playing obviously with the ori origin of the slice, having some selection of the normals that are applied if we want to see some other particular cuts through the geometry. I'll just these vectors might be of some angle, not necessarily not necessarily one, it can be some some different angles set. And very often it is pretty annoying to um, have this screen blocking the view. That's where we can switch off the plane that makes the cuts. A very good question may appear, and it is just right now, all the lengths units, the origin, the normals are in meters. So you, we need to use the absolute positions of the mesh in the viewer. Having the plane cut done, we would like to color it with a particular field. Let's say we would like to see what happens to the velocity. We will have two types of data. First one, the point data, which represents the interpolation of the result to the mesh and later smoothed uh, rendering of these results. It's a very good way to, to show um, <clears throat> a nice image so that it looks smooth and nice. And one would say, where is the result right now? Obviously we forgot or we did not yet change the time frame where we need to jump to the last time step in order to visualize the results. First thing you will notice is this very big red field, meaning that we are not properly scaling the data. First, let's toggle the filter visibility in order to see what's the range and immediately you will notice that it automatically rescaled to the visible region. Right now, if we so desired, we could change the maximum and minimum of the range, for example, putting two meters as a maximum. I personally like to have full numbers as, <coughs> as the minimum and maximum. Obviously, very often we also want to see the maximum value. In this case, we'll automatically rescale to the full range. So let's just apply once more to the two. At this uh, moment we have seen the rescaling and now let's compare the results that we'll have with the second element that is the cell data. The very first thing that uh, is thrown to our eyes is the pixelation of the result it seems as if we, have, we are playing Legos or Minecraft. The reason for that is that each cell is being colored with a single color that represents the value that sits inside the control volume. This allows us, this representation allows us to understand whether we have a fine enough mesh that was used to represent the flow. A coarse mesh, like over, like at this side here, 
demonstrates that even though the result might look smooth in the point data section, when we will investigate it with the cell data, we'll reveal that we have an incredibly coarse mesh that cannot properly capture all the features of the flow that are developing over there. An advice to a numerical engineer would be to refine the geometry or refine the mesh in this particular area in order to properly capture the result. There are multiple filters that we can apply to our result. But before we do that, well, we'll start with another one, that is the mesh clip, and we will apply the clipping to the filter that already has been done earlier. So we'll clip the slice. I'll just visualize the plane once more in order to properly see what we are doing. And I'll choose the normal to be in the Y direction, moving it a little bit backwards over here. I'll just apply this. We will hide the plane and hide the original slice. Right now what we have is a clipped slice. If I was to apply the same clip to the result this time, so the main root of the result, we'll use the clip, we will select the same parameters, that is 0 here, 1, and minus 0 0.1. What we will end up with is the clip of the whole volume results. I think it's, it's pretty easy to understand this, this top-to-down approach, like applying simplification of a simplification of a result. Each of them is completely independent and can be colored with different fields, like velocities, pressures, and other parameters that come along with the result itself. And now we would like to see something more interesting. Let's delete these filters so they do not obscure the view. Very often, some would say, I would like to draw some streamlines and see how does the flow move inside our geometry. We'll use the stream tracer filter. The stream tracer will require a source, a certain source of data. The default setting will create a high resolution line that is visible right now on the screen which will be split into 100 points or X points. We can have it 50 points if we want. If any streamline will pass through which, whichever of those points, it will be drawn on the screen. Let's take a look at the result. There we go. So our line was split originally by 100 points and some of the streamlines of the flow passed through this line, thus they were drawn on the screen. The second way of generating streamlines is to use the second seed type, that is the point seed type. We choose the type, we apply it so that the type can change, and now we're dealing with a specific set point around which there, we create a virtual sphere of a certain radius. Let's say it will be 0 0.02. Inside the sphere we'll randomly select 100 points or 50 points depending on the number we give here and any streamline that passes through this element will be drawn. This is a very good way to visualize particular regions of the flow. Now we can color the streamline, for example, with magnitude of velocity. This image looks very nice. At the same time, it is really hard to understand where is the flow happening. And now I would like to share with you a little trick that may help you visualize it. We'll go to the run number one. And first we will start creating a contour. This is a tool that will allow you to create ISO surfaces of certain values. 
For example, we will choose the pressure and we'll create some ISO surfaces of pressure. Before we do that, first let's see what are what is the range that pressure occupies. So we color the run with pressure, we see the result goes from minus 4.7 to 3.6. We can go to the contour and start adding the fields, let's say 3.5. This will be the first ISO surface. Let's put it 2. I'll just add a few more. 1, 0, minus 1. Oh, my typing skills are getting bad. Minus 2. I will switch off calculation of normals in order to speed up the, cal the calculation itself and the rendering. We'll hide the plane and wait for the end. Of course, we have to visualize the contour itself. We can hide the stream tracer. And now we see the ISO surfaces of pressure, which can be colored by the cell data. For example, keeping the scale. There we go. Now let's try to use both the contours and some other representations in order to have the visualization of the geometry itself. Unfortunately, we cannot use the velocity profile for creating contours. And we would love to do that. Why? Well, velocity close to any wall is close to zero. If we could make a contour of magnitude of velocity with a value that is very close to zero, we will have a representation of the flow zone. Let's do just that. First, we'll use another filter type, that is the calculator. This allows us to perform manipulations on the data itself. You can either play with cell data or point data. We'll keep the point data since they are smoother. You can give a name to this field. I'll call it example result. And now we have to apply a function. We can use sinus, cosinus, magnitudes, add, subtract, multiply, whatever we like. And what we need to use are the names of the fields available in the selection. In this case, I will simply make a magnitude of velocity and just apply it. Right now, the vector of velocity will be transformed into a scalar value, a single value that we are interested in. And we can color with the result example the whole field. if it does it timely. There we go. So right now we have the result example. We would have to rescale it. And we have the value. What we can do is apply another filter to this one. This time we'll take advantage of the contour, which we just uh, used a second ago. We'll switch up computational normals we're not interested in that, and use a very small value of isosurface for velocity. Contouring using the example result created by the calculator. I'll apply just that. And hide the calculator result. We end up having a very nice shell that represents the very slow velocity present close to the wall. Obviously, if our flow would have dead zones where fluid is not moving at all, it would also be caught. On the other hand, whenever we have a CFD simulation, it is not so often happening. So we don't worry about that. Now, let's make another filter. That is the, not the contour. We can just delete this one. We will use the filter of, we'll clip the mesh. 
in the x minus direction on the particular plane over here. Let's hide it and hide the contour. Leaving the shell that represents the flow domain with which we are working. Adding a stream tracer that we calculated earlier makes a visualization that is pretty pleasant to an eye. And which shows the real position of the flow and its behavior within it. With an image like that, we would like to save it for later. That's why we'll go to the viewport tools and choose the generate screenshot view. It will appear as a post-processing screenshot at the bottom of the screenshots we created. As you can see, I created quite some of them. In this case, we need to make some kind of cropping. So I'll just right-click on it, delete this one, and go back to the solution field that I have. Zoom out a bit, reposition, and create another screenshot. Beautiful. We can use the same setup in order to make other cuts or other visualizations that will prove to be very, very nice and useful. But later, we would like to be able to come back to the work that we've done. In order to do that, we can simply save a state, give it some kind of a name. I highly encourage you to keep the name of the simulation, the run that you used it on. So this will be turbulent steady state run one shell web streamlines you can see that I created one earlier now if I would to load other result or for example a mesh all my hard work with setting up filters will be lost they will be replaced and if I go back to the simulation as I did earlier well, the, rent, the viewer has reset the settings and loaded something else to the memory. So I go back, nothing there, or it will load again the whole thing. If I want to go back to work at the place where I left, well, it's just then, I'll just jump to the saved state and see it through. Do not be alarmed that the saved states take a little longer to load. We will have to apply all the filters and perform all the calculations. That's why it will require a moment to configure. And there we are, everything as we left it. There's one more thing that may prove to be very useful whenever you're dealing with a computer that do not have enough rendering power on installed in it. This is my case, unfortunately. I, uh, I do not have a very powerful graphics card. Well, it is enough to make this calculation, but if I were to work on a very big mesh, it may take quite a long time in order to load the data, perform the clips, make the analysis. That's why you can have the advantage of working in the cloud and directly stream your results from the computers. So let's load the case once more. And go to the configuration setup where we will switch off the WebGL support. Right now, you will first of all feel a little lag when it comes to operating the geometry itself. But the reason for that is that you do not play with a WebGL object on your computer. You are directly streaming images from the server, which is dynamically modified, calculated, rendered, packed, and sent to your screen live. Like watching a video, interactive video within your computer. 
This is very useful when you're dealing with big geometries. All right. We are done with the online post-processor for now. Obviously, we did not cover all the possibilities and all the great tools available there, but I hope you will find it interesting to play with the tools that are at your disposal. I would like to thank you for participating in this post-processing webinar. Until next time, bye-bye.